Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Explore VM podcast. I'm your host, Paul Woodward Jr. Today, we're going to look at a topic, you know, not typically, you know, in our tech that we do, but we have looked at some of the career development stuff in the past. And I've brought with today as a guest, a buddy of mine who I've met through a local, oddly enough, craft beer community. Uh, we've hung out at VMworld. It's nice to see his face back on camera again. Matt, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, Paul. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Matt Larson. Um, I, I believe the uh, first time I, I met you was probably at a local VMUG. Um, certainly, yeah, we had kind of touched base through some uh, kind of local craft beer uh, social media groups. But uh, I remember you giving a presentation um, at a local VMUG out at the zoo. And I was like, hey, like, I know you. And we kind of chatted for a minute. And it's kind of cool to connect on, you know, that, uh, that professional level uh, uh, as well. Um, so yeah, that was, that was quite a long time ago, maybe, wow, uh, more than 10 years, right? Um, um it, it's somewhere between five and 10. I don't know for yeah, sure, but it's, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. And, and like, this is actually kind of a cool topic to, uh, to discuss with you. Cause I remember at the time you gave a presentation about, um, kind of how you were working in an organization and, and you weren't really in IT. Um, but you were interested in technology and um, you had kind of uh, worked your way into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and had, you know, obviously VMUG, uh, you had, had had started to learn some things about VMware. And, and I don't remember all the details about what you said, but, but it was really cool. And, and at the time, um, I was working for a law firm and I had um, taken all of my, my VMware knowledge and kind of brought it there. So... Um, I started there in 2008. It was a fully, you know, physical, um, old school. <laughs> well, there's probably plenty of people now that work in IT that don't even know, you know, what a world like that looked like. But, you know, every, <laughs> right. every server had its own uh, Windows operating system directly installed on the hardware. And every server had its own uh, function, which was, which was pretty much one-to-one -one for the most part, hardware. Each, each box did its thing. You could walk into the server room and you're like, that's our email server and that's our other email server and that's mm -hmm. our web server and that's our database server. And each, uh, each thing was, was clearly uh, what it was. And, and um, so that was, that was kind of their environment. They were large enough. They had uh, five, five offices, maybe six um, throughout the state. So um, it, it wasn't small, but as an IT operation, it was, um, not a large group by any means. So that was really, really kind of fun for me because um, I got to take them from from that world to, uh, you know, essentially, you know, 99% virtualized by the time I got gone. And any, in today's world, um, what that was is probably still kind of antiquated, although I think a lot of small shops are still running in that, right? They had the SAN and, and the... Uh, you know, the ESX hosts. Um, actually, I think they were ESX and not ESXi at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it might have been 3.5, right? Um, and that was great. It was cool. Um, I, I worked at that firm for 11 years. Um, really enjoyed my time there. Um, kind of, you know, at, at a certain point, you've done everything, right? Um, yeah. And I was... <laughs> I was really responsible at the end of the day for, for everything at every location. So I had, you know, if we had to replace a firewall or a switch, um, that was me. I had to um, get quotes and figure out what projects we were doing. That was me. Um, I kind of had to do everything um, over the course of time. And, 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 and that was cool. Um, and eventually I just kind of got to that point where um, I was like, I've been doing this for 10 years. I know everything about this. <laughs> and, and that's really satisfying to have kind of built that and have that ownership. But I also reached that point in my career where I was kind of looking for like, Oh, what's next? Right. Like, yeah. Like, like I needed, I needed a new challenge. I'm like, I can't just keep replacing the same switches in the same building every, you know, four years, five years, mm -hmm. um, essentially upgrading the same, you know, uh, core core functions of the, of, of, of the same business. So I kind of needed to expand from there uh, and, and did. 
Um, so I kind of, I moved on to another organization and it was, it was sort of similar in, in size, but um, different in scope. They were a nationally, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, they, we, uh, that I'm trying to think of a, <laughs> so I went from, from law firm world to another service oriented type business that did a lot okay. of, um, uh, maintenance on healthcare machines, MRIs, ultrasounds, the, the whole gamut, right? So they had field technicians all over the, the country that were going into to different places. And of course, I didn't have to do that, but um, we had our location in, in Wisconsin, of course, where I was headquartered, but I was spending a lot of time going out to Salt Lake City, Utah, spending a lot of time going to uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana, just across the river from uh, Louisville, Kentucky, um, and really kind of doing doing a lot of infrastructure updates. It was a, a business that had kind of uh, bolted on a lot of other businesses that had done some some mergers and acquisitions of, of like-minded companies over time. And that's okay. kind of where it ended, right? So like they would buy this other company that had all these different systems, um, different active directory, if you will, different email system, and just buy them and say like, all right, we're the same company now and kind of left it at that. So that was, that was quite, quite the world to live in, <laughs> you know, where, where you're, you're actively interacting with people and, you know, you want to uh, send them a calendar invite or whatever it might be. And like, it, it wasn't really functionally much different than if they worked for a completely different organization. Right. You know, I mean, different. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, you come from a world where you'd spend so much time in your one office doing like the one thing to now you've got to move around all these different locations spread out across the country, not just citywide or whatever, or statewide even. But, you know, it's it's definitely a big jump to go from that that routine, if you will. Like I would I don't it's I don't want to jinx it for people, but, you know, IT doesn't feel like a routine job. Like it's not the same thing every day. You don't know what's going to happen. What's um, you know, you don't know what, what's going to break overnight or what patch is going to do, whatever. So it's. It's it can be steady, but not a routine. So to, to, to even like break that up into all of these different locations, now you've yeah you're dealing with mergers, acquisitions. It you know it, it gets to become uh, complicated. Yes, yeah, there's you know a whole level of of uh, layers of complication, and then on top of that, um, you know when you're kind of expected to also support that that layer of complication, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, you go into, I, I went into a, an office in Salt Lake City and spent, uh, basically I was going there in a weekend to replace a old Cisco 4507. Um, and anyone that's that's uh, replaced one of those, number one knows that like, they probably make a great boat anchor. They're <laughs> very heavy, they're giant and uh, I, I am sure they were like amazing and, and incredibly expensive at the time they installed something like that. Yeah. And and to rip something like that out of a, a server room that has, you know, this whole Cisco UCS system with, with all these different layers of fiber and, and SAN all connected into <laughs> it. Yeah. And and literally to, to do that by yourself is is amazing. Um I'm not saying I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it is amazing right. that like, like, like you just kind of, you're kind of in the middle of it. You kind of get halfway through and you're like, what, what am I doing? Like, what, yeah. <laughs> like, why is, why is anybody, why would anyone, um, you know, choose to do this? But um, no, it's very rewarding <laughs> when you're all gone and the cable management looks pretty and, and, and all that but you know i, I kind of look back on it and, and like it was it's incredibly frustrating when you you know you, you get everything up everything's working right and by everything i mean everything except for uh except for vmware right so like <laughs> your vms are up and running but you can't manage anything you can't get into vcenter and your vcenter is not talking to your other vcenter and and you have a simple question for anybody you know, what is the, uh, what's the root password and no one knows. <laughs> so, you know, you, you then that, that, that entails a very, uh, lengthy call with 
you know, support call with VMware to resolve an issue like that um, and does not make for a great weekend type activity. <laughs> no, not at all. I actually, in, in the same vein to that, so <clears throat> uh, maybe about a year, year and a half ago, I, I noticed uh, like a filtered message in my Facebook Messenger inbox. I'm like, oh, what is this? And it's the IT admin for one of my customers at one of my previous employers. So, you know, we're looking three, four years, you know, two, three years, but, you know, prior to that, where the infrastructure was put into place. And it's like, hey, you know, Paul, I know you've moved on from XYZ Core, um, but I was wondering if you still knew our root password. And I was just like, oh, no, you poor, you poor guy. Um, I was like, hey, nice to hear from you. Yeah, yes. Yeah, unfortunately, no, like you, we wrote that down. You had it in a spreadsheet and my that never was on my laptop. And even if it was, you know, that's that's gone because I'm no longer with that company. So hope you can figure it out. But, you you know, it's you said it was in your similar vein of your standard passwords. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, to. That whole, yeah, companies losing the roots and, you know, scrambling to find how do you get access to it. Yeah, that yeah. just made me smile, made me think of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we all have our our, our, <laughs> our battle scars of, of working through things. And um, it, it was it was interesting. So, I, I mean, I I, I spent a, about a year and a half at this organization and, and nothing, uh, nothing to discredit anyone that I worked with. Uh, you know, there, of course, it was, it was just a lot of, of fighting uh, the old technology, the old things, uh, whether it was lost passwords or lost, uh, you know, just like, why was this done like this? And, and you, you replace something and something breaks um, there, you know, I found a, a lot of, a lot of interesting things over time. Um, similar, similar type story, replaced a bunch of switches. Uh, one time and, and found out that uh, I, I, whatever specific version of ESXi, like you could set it up without a gateway address. And, uh, and, and, and if you did so, um, it, it could no longer find vCenter, which would kind of make <laughs> sense, right? Because it was a completely different location and required routing. And I don't know how it was working before, but it was. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, just, you know, I don't know how many hours it, it took me or how late at night I was there to, to figure out, like, it, you know, why, why that happened and, and how to mm -hmm. resolve it, but kind of dig through. So it was, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of big projects and a lot of things that I pushed through and, and, and struggled with in, in some ways, um, just due to, you know, improper things. And, and, and mm -hmm. there was a certain level of, uh, accomplishment there like you feel good like you know solving problems and, and get things done and and of course uh you know it, essentially then as that was that was what it was and then certainly we had pandemic times come and and that's kind of where my my break in my career came up so okay. so as as a summer of of uh 2020 was was coming to an end and the kids school year was approaching um we don't really have uh, there wasn't going to be any school so not not in the traditional sense not where they were going to actually go to school um yeah. so all we really knew is that the school year was going to start and it was going to be virtual and uh, one of my kids was, was starting first grade so he's going to be in school all day and the youngest one uh was going to be in a half day so kind of had this conundrum of we didn't really have anywhere for them to go mm -hmm. um, I had been working at home uh, like many people since about March and kind of was just slowly getting more and more um, just kind of burned out on that you know so so I had been doing a lot of the traveling and a lot of those big projects and, and those were those were fun and rewarding and and uh, you know then I, then it kind of turned into I was just at home. Um, they had laid off, you know, a couple people, um, eventually, you know, let one go. So it was kind of like, I was doing a lot of day to day stuff, a lot of yeah. small stuff. So and so can't get their soft phone. Can you call them and help them? And I'm like, you know, yeah, I can like, 
and, and nothing against that person on, you know, or this person. Like I, I knew most of these people we were on, you know, comfortable terms. It wasn't that like they didn't like doing it, but there's not a lot after doing 10, 12, 13 years of, <laughs> you yeah. know, you're swapping out switches and building data centers and, and all that, like helping people with their, their, their stuff just that kind of became my day-to-day -day job. And I was like, this isn't gratifying, right? Like, yeah, I'm not really enjoying it. And there's not really any way I can just sit at home and take care of my children and help them do school and do all these, these things that I'm not really enjoying. I, I kind of lost that um that satisfaction of like hey like uh, i'm really accomplishing big things and i'm solving tough problems it right. was more just like you know tickets help desk and and yeah some people love that and and i did that for for a couple of years of my life and i i also i also enjoy that at times right like it feels good helping people out i don't know oh, whether yeah. it's you know, donating to your, your favorite charity or, or helping them, helping, helping someone get their email, right? Like, Oh yeah, it, absolutely. But it's not, it's not, uh, it's not mental gymnastics. You're not solving any big problems and, and uh, it, it gets a little old. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just showed, you know, I just kind of was like, you know what, I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to be a dad. And, and uh, it was the best thing that I ever did. It was really cool. Having, having the, uh, an entire school year to spend with my kids who at the time were, you know, six and six and four um, and to help them through the school year and kind of be their teacher in, a, in mm -hmm. a certain way to guide them through that stuff was pretty rewarding and um, probably the, you know, the hardest job I've, I've ever had um, to, today just because uh, I felt like yeah, there, was, there was that much more at stake maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe there wasn't. But uh, it was it was it was great. So um, the other the other flip side of that is I've always been very interested in security, cybersecurity. Um, certainly as a, as a system admin, as a network person, uh, managing firewalls, you know, running phishing simulations, um, kind of the whole gamut of like being aware of of what security was on on a day-to-day -day basis um, and user education, but also like kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it. And like um, really just kind of like, not just patch Tuesday and like, hey, there's this, there's this, uh, there's this issue, we need to patch the servers, we need to fix it. But like, I would, you know, I would get those emails and I'd read them. I'd be like, oh, what, is, what does this mean? Like, what is, mm -hmm. a, what is a buffer overflow? Like, how do you, <laughs> how do you exploit that? Like. And, and, and like to be able to take the time and really dive into those things um, and understand them, there's there's kind of this, uh, I feel like for a lot of people, especially people in tech, people that came from the type of background I did where you're, you're just, you're building things, you're setting things up. Um, hackers, term hacker, um, kind of conjures this like dark um, scene. <laughs> or, or sometimes, a lot of times, like this, uh, um, there's kind of this dichotomy where it's either the script kiddies that don't really understand what they're doing, but they know how to download and use these tools, or yeah. the or or the extreme opposite, where it's just like these these geniuses that 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 can do amazing things that are reading ones and zeros um, or something, you know, just mm -hmm. just wild and like. There are those people, no doubt. There are there are some incredibly amazing, intelligent people that are that are figuring out how to break things. Um, and I think for the most part, they're probably getting paid by you know nation state actors, and and they're well funded. Um, and, and there's a whole lot in the middle. And that was 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 where I was. Uh, I spent a lot of time, and it was very fascinating to me. So I knew that. As I kind of dove into it and started to learn more about like okay, how do these tools work? How do you do this? Like, and it, it's really fun. It's not. It, it's really entertaining to the point where, um, I mean, the last time I went on vacation before I started working my job, I had thrown a, a VM of of Kali Linux um, on my laptop, 
and a VM called Metasploitable. And I just spent like my my plane flight like trying to find different ways to break into the VM. And and it was kind of cool and satisfying because I had gained enough knowledge over um, those nine months to like do so without like following a guided um, thing, which is which is what I had been doing. Um, and it was kind of fun. Like I, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. Uh, and of course, like these things are built to be broken and built to be yeah. broken into. Um, but it's still it's still interesting to 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 like. Um, see how it actually works and realize like at, at a certain point, it's really kind of simple. It's not that much different than learning how to uh, do anything else with a computer, right? Like some people learn how to make amazing artwork and then some people learn how to break into computers and, and kind of like seeing how that, that worked and kind of stripping away the, the black arts and the, the magic out of it was really fun and fascinating to me. <laughs> Um, I have a, I, I subscribed to a couple different websites. Uh, someone had led me to Cybrary, um, and they had some labs built into their stuff. Um, but there's one called TryHackMe, TryHackMe.com. Um, okay. And it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's like six dollars a month, and everything's web based. Um, and when you, you, there's there's free versions too, right? So like you can do it for free, and you have a certain ability to, to do stuff so you can fire up your own vm and vpn into their network and and they have these different uh rooms they call them but okay i found it really really worth like the, the money to to dive in and i was like man i would have loved this stuff when i was a kid damn <laughs> you know I, I probably would have just like been doing it like up all night <laughs> well and it, looking at it like that you know you said you'd have loved it as a kid i mean i have to imagine you know learning hacking and doing all that stuff and getting into the weeds like that seeing how to break it is no different than a kid taking apart their stereo because they want to see what the like the pieces look like inside and how it works or you know disassembling something expensive that they're never gonna be able to put back together yeah i i completely agree and i and i think uh you know i think i kind of came from that mindset for sure i mean uh you know i first computer i ever got in my life didn't have any kind of uh connection i'm an i'm an old man um you know i i think i got my first computer in 1994. Um, maybe it came with a modem maybe it didn't but i i distinctly do remember um uh, buying my first uh, you know modem pci card whatever uh maybe it was even isa <laughs> but i remember you know having to having to peel the sticker off to remove the case um, on the Packard Bell uh, <laughs> desktop to, to put the new modem in and, and, and all that. And like, that was, that was kind of like the beginning for me. Um, and and it, so it's kind of been a slow escalation. And I think that's, that is kind of it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a throwback to like, how do these things work? And like, understand how they work on a, on a software level and how to install software and how to put these pieces together. But there's kind of, so much at this low low level um and we're just constantly you know inundated with like hey there's this new flaw and this new flaw and like these patches and and i feel like sometimes like you know as, as administrators it can just be fatiguing um but it's real um you know mm -hmm. it, it's incredibly important to keep doing this stuff and and i think i was kind of inspired so like yeah there's you know there's there's red teamers there's people that kind of just do this stuff um, you know, as their day job, right? They're they're hired right. by organizations to to try to you know find the flaws and 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 break in. And I kind of realized like I wanted to know how to do that, um, but I didn't really want to do that because um, I, mostly because it sounds really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> right um, and, and i and not not that i'm lazy but like i'm <laughs> really really impressed by um the skills that that those people have to constantly be updating right um they're they're always like what's new what's next um they have to be right because as things evolve like they have to be on top of it they have to be able to go into organizations and say like hey this this thing you installed last year that you haven't updated, like, uh, this is how we're getting in, um, yeah. or, or six months ago or whatever it might be. Like, um, they have to be on top of that game. And I think just understanding, 
um, all of that and and kind of being able to to wrap around it and work in an organization to kind of help uh, bolster the defenses, if you will, um, to be able to talk the technology, to be able to understand uh, what's going on was was kind of my driving force. So um, I did uh, I did take both the uh, CompTIA Security Plus exam, which I will say is as someone who had you know over a decade. Um, in IT, especially yeah. these systems and network administration, none of the material was new. Um, being able okay. to being able to like memorize and decipher a lot of the differences between the some of the the, the details and the technology was definitely new, right? Like I don't know that I would have off the top of my head uh, before I started preparing for it or looking at the material, but able to tell you. Which, uh, you know, the difference between the different cryptographies as far as which ones were asymmetrical and which were symmetrical and, and some of those, those real uh, nitty gritty details. And okay. those things don't always matter. It, it matters that you know what they are. Um, but, you know, you can always look stuff up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, so Google, Google is always your friend, but you still need to yeah, understand, absolutely. you know, your foundations. Um, and what you're doing. Um, so I, I enjoyed that study part of it. So, you know, you just said you did the security plus, you found a few websites. Were there any other sources that you used? Obviously, you know, you didn't, you, you know, you, you had the, the motivation, the ambition to go out and learn all this on your own. So it's not like you went to a class or you were doing classroom work. So I'm just, just, you know, curious what, what other materials you might've used? Yeah, for sure. So, um, Definitely started with the security plus and as far as materials, you know, I found I found information everywhere. Um, okay, I like I like Twitter. Um, there are a lot of great people There's It's a really interesting community in general. I think the whole infosec uh, world as any niche field is there's a lot of people out there that are kind of like, hey, look, you know, looking to help people right like yeah. get into their field or um, kind of break those barriers or, or kind of uh, maybe dispel some of the myths. So there's a lot. Of, uh, I think that's a great start starting point is to kind of look out um, social media and find people that are that are sharing um, information. Um, and, you know, and you have to be careful. Um, weed out, weed out the negative stuff um, mm -hmm. and, and definitely kind of focus and, and funnel in on especially people who are focusing on education and not people who are necessarily selling anything. Um, yeah. Because there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of YouTube content, which is fantastic, you know, and I'm sure they're making their, their money on advertising and some of the other stuff they're selling and yeah. there's some really quality, high quality stuff. Um, off the top of my head, I, I don't like have anything, but uh, um, there, there's, there's a lot. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's YouTube videos and and we were kind of talking earlier about listening to to podcasts and some of that. And there's not a lot of podcasts that really uh, focus on the education side of that yeah. stuff. Um, but I kind of understand why, because um, you kind of need it in a serialized format. Like if you're learning something new, you kind of need to start at, at, at A and end at Z. Like you need to build a base. Right. Um, so you need some kind of progression. It's it's not going to be, um, you know, hey, this week we're gonna we're gonna talk about you know this topic and and then that. There's just a lot of a lot of good stuff out there. So I would say you know another great resource is the public library. Um, I okay. would constantly just go on my app for I live in Milwaukee County and I'd punch in CompTIA and I find a book it might not even be about um exactly what i wanted um they might have like a cloud security book they might have okay. a, um whatever whatever it might be right um network network uh, plus like um things that i was like i don't i don't i don't want this certification i don't need right. it it's not it's not gonna like specifically enable my goals but just to um I, I kind of felt like I was continually ingesting information from different points, whether it was listening to podcasts, listening to YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos, 
reading mm-hmm. books. Um, I'm very much a, I'm very much an all opportunity learner. I think for, <laughs> yeah. you know, for people who can like narrow it down and say like, Hey, this is how I learn. Um, yeah. They should do that. I kind of tend to learn like in every possible way. Like I like to read books. I like to watch videos. I like to listen to things. Uh, the more, the more I hear, the more I see, the more things come at me from different <laughs> perspectives and points of views, the more I kind of form my own, uh, you know, vision in my head of, of what that might be. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I highly recommend to anyone that's kind of pursuing a specific thing, like go out and find, go and find other people that are doing it. Um, certainly, you know, search their advice, but like, I don't know that anybody could really teach me, you know, kind of all, all the things that I learned in, in the same way that I, I learned. And of course, like when you get on a job, like everything's different, right? When you're, when you're in the mm-hmm. workplace, um, it's, it's not so much like you're learning this stuff and then you're going to go and do it. And, and it's the same with like any, anything I've ever done in tech. Like I've never been in a classroom where someone was like, Oh, this is how you do this. And then you go and sit at your desk and you're like, Hey, I know how to do this. <laughs> it's, it's more, someone shows you kind of a classroom perspective of like, this is the software. This is how it works. Um, this lab, you know, you can walk through all these different steps and you can set up, you know, stand up your own server that does this and that. And you're like, cool. Um, mm-hmm. Now I know how to do it in a lab environment. And then you see it in, in, in the real world. Um, and it all kind of clicks then, right? It all kind of comes together. But you're not going to just go through a lab on, you know, standing up a, a new V center and then just walk into a brand new, you know, organization and, and do everything right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to self shame a little bit here. So I, I'm in a, a pre sales role now. So I'm not actually as like hands on as I had used to be. Um, and I was, I was actually kind of like sad. I kind of was losing that. So I went out this, this past summer and I bought a home lab and I, I keep looking over to my right at it. I'm admiring it. Um, so I went out and I bought a home lab and I'm like, well, and it's going to benefit my, my, my nine to five job. It's going to benefit me here with Explore VM where I can make videos and like, you can contribute some of that content to the community on like how to's. I had to blow it up and start over fresh because I was messing up so many things when I was configuring ESXi and like vCenter. I'm like, how did I forget so many of these things? I was so embarrassed. I'm like, why is this not working? And it was just the dumbest stuff, like the wrong VLAN on a host. I'm like, are you kidding me, Paul? <laughs> so there was, it was just like, oh yeah, this is, this has been far too long. So now we're, we, now we're not going to let, you know, even though again, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm more in the uh, consultant role. I'm not doing it day to day. Like I'm not going to lose those skills anymore. That was, that was, that was sad. <laughs> Yeah, I I completely relate, and it's it's really funny because uh, not my last my last job, but that that decade I was at the law firm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we we replaced hardware like pretty much every two years, like on a, on a rolling schedule, like servers, right? So you know, ESXi hose, and so there'd be not that they were two years old, but you know, kind of on this rotation. But a lot of times they were maybe four years old and uh, you know i was given the opportunity so many times to just like i mean explicitly to like walk out with that hardware and i was just like i don't have anywhere to put these servers like i like yeah you know i i just i'm like i don't have the space for it i don't have like I, i'm like and then yeah you know two years two years later i'm like man like I could really use that hardware like I, like because like you're saying like i i don't um i don't really do that now um and, and maybe a lot of maybe that's a great segue so so i had yeah, all this time yeah. I, yeah i had all this time off um and i was i've always been fascinated in the the, the info stack or cyber security world um so so i did the security plus and, and that was fascinating and i'm like all right well you know kind of what's next um, yeah. And and uh, there's there's a lot of uh, CISSP is is obviously very well known. Um, certified ethical hacker is very well known. There's a lot of security certs that that show up in these job searches. But 
cup tea is pretty affordable and mm-hmm. i was paying for all this out of my own pocket of course um and and like you said i'm not taking any classroom stuff but um you know books i was buying some books buying checking out library books um i did it on uh, you know pretty uh, affordable budget i would say overall um and the next one i did was called the Cybersecurity analyst or, or cisa or cysa plus um, so I got that certification and that really kind of solidified for me that that was what I was interested in, right? Just kind of a, the, the analysis side of things and, and it kind of, uh, kind of pushed all the right buttons for me where I felt like I could use all of my knowledge of, of how networks work, of how servers are built, of how all these things uh, come together. Um, mm-hmm. but I didn't necessarily want to do that anymore. So after not after after stepping away from it and and kind of changing jobs and then and then not having um you know a, a career in tech for for that year i was like i don't i don't really want to go back to doing the same um i kind of want to kind of want to build on that and kind yeah. of uh, kind of work into work my way into the security sector so 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 i did that and um as as the school year was approaching, started started searching out and and uh, found myself uh, in another law firm, a uh, significantly <laughs> larger organization. And I think you know I I kind of targeted it. Um, I I knew at least one person who worked there who I'd worked with previously. Um, they were not in technology whatsoever, but um, just kind of had that comfort of like, hey, like, you know. Uh, what's this organization like, you know, do you like working there? And, and you kind of get that, that good feedback, but also I think a lot of people who worked in uh, certain industries just kind of know, like they all have their niche um, pros and cons, right? So I'm sure that I could probably spend all day complaining about working <laughs> in, in the legal world, but no, actually, obviously I wouldn't have gone back into it if I didn't like it. Um, yeah. So it's it's really interesting um, to go from uh, working in technology for companies that had five or six people in their entire yeah. department and like 200 people in the, the entire organization um, or and, and really I've kind of kind of lived in that life for a long time, even in organizations I worked for that had thousands of people. They weren't people that used computers, right? Um, or if they did, it was like, okay, they, you know, they weren't using a computer. It's more of like a thin client, to like an AS400 in a warehouse or something along those lines. Um, whereas, like now, um, I work in a in an information security department, which is yeah you know, reports up to a CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, um, which is 10 people. So so the security department alone is essentially twice the size of the entire technology groups that I'm used to <laughs> belonging to. Yeah. So we're just dedicating, you know, our entire life all day long. Um, as as a, and my official job title is security analyst. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, working on GRC, which is Governance, Risk, and Compliance. Hmm. Um, Thank you. I was going to ask what that stood for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's boring as this analogy sounds, I kind of equate it to like the accounting or the auditing accounting side of like technology <clears throat> in a business. Okay. Right. So um there's just a lot of like uh uh, of course like some organizations um healthcare organizations everyone knows about hipaa these days right it's like it's like the it's kind of become a joke to some degree (laughs) like hey i can't tell you that hipaa well of course you know right but uh it doesn't apply to yeah (laughs) about yourself but um, you know, everybody knows that healthcare organizations have, have HIPAA. Um, I think most people in technology that have ever worked for a public company know that SOX or Sarbanes-Oxley 
is compliance that um, is required for, for public companies. Yeah. Everyone who's ever worked for banks knows that uh, GLBA um, is, you know, another another thing they have to meet. And then, um, of course, there's ISO standards. So um, one of the big ones that, that I know uh, we currently comply with and are certified is the ISO uh, 27001, right? Okay. Um, that's pretty common um, around the world. It's a, it's an international standard, and really, it's just a framework um, similar to like uh, you know in the United States, NIST has like the eight hundred fifty three. I think is the cybersecurity framework. Okay. And, yep. and for people who aren't familiar, like frameworks are are really generic, right? So they have they have all these categories. They don't say like, hey, you need to have you know this firewall and it needs to be configured in this specific way um this is um more like are you doing these things right uh, do you have these policies in place and 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 how do you what procedures and which documented um things do you have to follow these policies so a lot of the things that that my kind of life revolves around is is that um and it's I don't know. It's interesting. It's different, right? Yeah. So and instead of instead of me logging into a firewall and, and making changes or um, allowing things or blocking things, I'm kind of like going to the firewall people and saying, like, hey, like, uh, you know, are you guys are you guys following this this policy or this procedure? Um, maybe okay. that's not maybe that's not quite the way. <laughs> maybe that's not quite <laughs> accurate. I'm trying to trying to think of a better way to phrase it. Um, okay. Yeah. So, got a little long-winded there. Um, oh, it's quite all right. <laughs> great. Re rewind and reset me a little bit. No, it's all right. I, you know, I let my guests go when they're talking. So, question I have, you know, as we get back into the into the field or get back into the you know the world, did you? How hard was it? Given like you're changing your focus. I mean, you you come with. A, a dozen plus years of experience in the law firm. So that, that kind of makes you stand out when you apply to that specific location. But did you get blowback because you were, uh, uh, you know, uh, the data center guy? Now you're looking at security or were you, were, was your background coupled with what you had, you know, done on self-training sufficient? Yeah, I think, uh, I think what was kind of interesting about it, especially for this, this specific role um, and, and kind of like, you know, uh, maybe the appeal for me and and uh, certainly I can't necessarily speak for them, but maybe the appeal um, for what I brought to the table was really just kind of like that that broader, deeper understanding. So okay. you know, I kind of have I kind of have the ability to to talk to the the network guys, for example, right? And I and I I understand what they're telling me when they say uh yeah you know what these switches in tokyo that are um have this vulnerability that you're telling me about are are, are out of date but we've been really working hard on these other projects to replace these sd-wan devices we've been working at midnight you know two or three times a week on this and and we just haven't had time to either update the the firmware on these switches or to replace the hardware that's that's waiting um and I understand, that, right? I've been yeah. there. I've managed my time um, as a network admin, as a system admin. So it's not just like understanding the technology; it's also understanding where people are coming from and what their job is like. And I think that maybe, maybe no one really necessarily explicitly knew that I would understand that. Um, but I feel like it kind of gives you a little bit different perspective, um, and, and that's something like. I really find kind of fun now. So like one of the, one of the things that I'm highly involved in is vulnerability management, right? So um, we have, you know, scanners and agents on basically everything in our environment reporting back to this dashboard. And we have, uh, you know, regular meetings with the different groups of people in the organization. So, you know, I meet with the, the network people, we meet with the video yeah. conference people, um, whatever it might be and and so you know I, i'm in a meeting with you know 
someone and I'm like, all right, look, uh, we have this, this critical vulnerability on this switch. Um, it says that, you know, Telnet's enabled, like, can we disable that, right? Um, and not only do I know what that, that means, um, but like, I, I kind of like functionally understand, like, uh, you know, what's involved with logging into a switch and turning off Telnet, like, that's easy, right? I, I, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I know I'm not asking them to do anything like extremely time consuming, but it's also something like, like uh it's a big win to do those small things like hey this is a, this is a, a protocol that we should just not allow no one should be using it um it, it gives us risk that is not acceptable and not necessary so let's do that one um by the way there's this new vulnerability in this you know cisco ios and the switch we're running here and they're like well you know what we already have a brand new switch it's going to be replaced you know as soon as possible but you know we can't do it tomorrow because it's on the other side of the, the world or whatever it might be right and, and it, you know and i kind of have that like uh i have that knowledge to understand those things and and i think so i think there's a lot of value there i don't think taking time off really uh you know fortunately maybe in normal times it would have looked bad um to just say like yeah i just decided to like hang out and you know i you know, take care of my kids for a year. It, it shouldn't, but I, I, you know, I understand um, pre pre pandemic or outside of extenuating circumstances, people don't always, uh, you know, that you, if you're looking at someone's resume and you're like, well, are they, are we going to hire them? And like two years later, you know, they're going to learn, they're going to come in and, 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 you know, be val by the time they're like extremely valuable, they're just going to be like, ah, I don't really want to work for a year now. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think, no, I don't, I don't think anyone looked at it as a bad thing. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I think I was able to sell it as a positive, um, just kind of, you know, as, as something I did for positive reasons. Yeah. And I, yeah. And, and I truly did, you know, so, um, that, that was useful to me. So, you know, you've got quite an interesting story. Now, if you were to look back on everything we just spoke about um, and pick out maybe two pieces of advice, like, if you know, just to really drive home, so anybody considering making the changes, um, anybody trying to self-educate, what, what would you recommend? Yeah, I think the big takeaway is um, definitely pursue the things that, that you're most passionate about and that you're interested about. Because if you can spend, if you can spend hours and hours, essentially, if you have the luxury, like I did, to to spend, you know, the equivalent of a full time job, um, learning something, and by the time you've learned enough about it, um, that you feel like you you've gotten some value out of it, that you could bring that value somewhere, uh, you know, you're gonna be in a pretty good place because you obviously put that time in for yourself. Now, you know, if you're just kind of doing it just because you're like, hey, I can probably get a, a decent job and, and make some money and you're trudging through it mm -hmm. and you're not enjoying it, it's probably something maybe you should rethink. Um, and especially in technology, there are, there are so many different avenues out there. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I work with people in security that are so technically intelligent. Um, I just feel like I feel dumb when when they talk to me. And it's amazing. Like like I love I love that, right? Like um I love being around those people. And and at the same time, um, you know, I, I've worked with, with other people that um don't necessarily have a lot of deep technical skills. Maybe maybe they're uh, you know, a manager or a project management and mm -hmm. they still like they still really enjoy the topic. Like they like working around it, um, but diving into those details just really isn't their thing. And, and, and like zero disrespect to those people because they're filling a very important role. So yeah. I think, I think my, my best advice is, you know, find what, what kind of drives you, what makes you tick, if you will. Um, and just kind of like consume as much of it as you can. Like, um, I, I feel like I became a little obsessed with it. Like I was kind of like eating it, dreaming it. Um, 
Yeah. And and then once I got into it and started doing it, like I kind of could back off that a little bit, right? Yeah. I get to go into work. I get to enjoy it. Uh, I really like what I do, but then I kind of get to step away, come home, enjoy my time with my family, and wake up and go back and and kind of do that again. And it's it's a uh, it's been a positive experience for me. Well, that's good. It, that's, you know, sage advice to a lot of people, you know, be sure you're doing what makes you happy. I've yeah. been in, I've been in positions and roles where it's just been unpleasant or, you know, just bad for my mental health. And I, I, I will agree fully, you know, you might have to jump around a little bit. You might change your fields. I, you know, like you said, I, I told my story, you know, all those years ago, I was uh, in manufacturing for nine years. I was operating a forklift in the CNC press. And I mean, it paid well, it was a stable job, but it was just not making me happy. It was just not where I wanted to be. And, you know, took, took, took the risk, rolled up, you know, rolled the dice, changed careers and it's been amazing. So I think that's, I think that's good advice. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, it, truly, I, I still remember, I kind of, I remember you, you talking about, you know, kind of your your origin story, if you will. And uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it was, it was inspiring. It was, I mean, I was already working in tech, but um, I, I thought it was, it was, it was great. And that's kind of why when you wanted to talk about this, I was like, that's perfect. That, that's a great, great thing to discuss with you. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I, I thought you've got a good story to share. Might be what, the, you know, somebody needs out there to, you know, make their change as well. So I want to say, you know, thank you uh, for your time. You know, it's, stepped away from your family to record with us. So I, again, I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Always, always great. Hope to see you in person sometime soon. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. If you'd like to continue the conversation around today's topic, have an idea for the show, or would like to be a guest on the Explore VM podcast, please reach out to me on Twitter at Explore VM, email me, paul at explorevm.com, or on facebook.com slash explorevm. Also, check out my other shows, the Blocks and Bytes Grilling and Technology Show on YouTube. And if you're into stocks and learning about investing, give the Money Badgers Associates a listen. And as always, once again, thank you for listening.